Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the National Basketball Arena, where we're here for the under 16C Subway Schools Cup. Uh, we have the visiting team in a wine jersey, uh, Laurel Hill from Limerick, taking on Skull Isla from Donegal. I'm joined here in commentary by Pat O'Neill of Ulster Elks. So, Pat, uh, you mentioned there, obviously, just before we came on stream, just one or two players. So, who are the players we should be looking out for early in this game? Yeah. Yeah, for earlier on, uh, I think uh, we saw Lauren for Lauren Hill. Uh, Yana Zundel, uh, number six. She was really effective for them. She's been a good good scorer for, on this under-16 squad as well when she played in the under-19s earlier. And then uh, for Klaus Eilig, it's uh, number 11, Shannon Ekuigan. She's been phenomenal for them, really high scoring guard. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how she gets on here in this atmosphere. They've brought a great crowd with them, you have to say, all the way down from Letter Kenny. And it uh, should be an interesting game. Yeah, just on that, uh, interesting, all right. And obviously, we looked down, obviously, Laurel Hill. Pat mentioned there, obviously, about Yana uh, Zundi playing earlier. They were unfortunately, they lost out in a very, very close game. In the under 19 C, it was really good, obviously, to see the likes of uh, Yana Zundel playing up at that level as well. Um, so, obviously, it shows the fact that she's 10 and 19, she'll probably be a key player here playing at her own age group at 16. But I suppose, Pat, obviously, them losing that game earlier, how much will coach Tommy Walsh and some of them girls want to make sure they win this one? Uh, look, I think everybody wants to win when they're in a uh, in the final, so they do. And it, losing the game might even just add a little bit more spice for them, but no team wants to come up here and just compete. You know, everybody wants to try and take home the cup at the end of the day. Uh, Jennifer Duffy hit that first score for Laurel. And here she is taking another one. Unlucky. Just rimmed up. On the inside there. Pa uh, mentioned some pre-game country, obviously. Shani Nkudig on there. High score and in some of the previous rounds to get her school to this cup final. And she gets the first score on the board for her team. So Zundel. Past the, past the Duffy. Another long three pointer goes up. Shot there with number 20, and it's uh, Alexa McInerney who gets that three. So, uh, good scoring here early on in the game there, Pat. Um, obviously, five points to two, just with it, less than two minutes gone. Yeah, you know, you, sometimes you don't expect as much in, in under 16C, uh, but it's great to see both teams are going at it, and it's nice to see. Uh, some shots dropping early for them. Yeah, because it definitely is with the Subway Schools Cup. You see uh, the packed out arena in the previous game there. We had um, Klaus Javira, the Mane G there, were playing up against uh, Mercy Mount Hawk. I think we nearly had a thousand people across the centre court there on the other side. You know, really low. But again, as they move out, it's really nice to see there the Klaus Eder, the travelling fans, come in and just, I suppose, bring the exact same type of intensity. As you can see there in the background, as the flags go up, you know, the blue and yellow, the school colours really get behind those girls. And I think you'll see in these schools games, coming down the stretch, at the end of the game, that really plays a pivotal role, knowing that you have the backing of your fans. Makes it feel like a, a kind of a home game, even though you're here in Dublin. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and anything that can help these girls settle into it, you know, for a lot of them, it'll be the first time that they've played in this type of environment. But it's really great that uh, so many, you know, the schools buy into it. So many, they put on supporters buses. So many of the students get to travel down here and see their team compete. Zondel there puts that one up inside. She'll be happy she finally got that one to go after uh, two misses previous. But Laurel Hill jump out to an early lead here. Seven plays four. Interesting to see there both teams kind of uh, opt in formation to start di differently. Whereas one team is going opt in for the zone of defense, the other team is opting to go with a straight up man to man. Yeah, you know, a lot of the time it's down to coach's philosophy. Uh, sometimes it's it's depending on the personnel that you have. You know, you, you might feel that you struggle a bit in man to man and, and you switch into a zone and, and you know, you, you settle into it, it forces team to shoot. And at this level, uh, there's not a lot of great shooters out there. so. You're forcing teams to take attempts and giving you more opportunities to grab rebounds and come back out. Yeah, it's so really, I suppose, it's limited those high percentage shots close to the basket and play the percentages of the game. As Laurel Hill seems to be really crashing the offensive rebounds, giving themselves more and more opportunities. Shani Kooning on there pulls a nice rebound for her team.
Yeah, good pace here, you know, to start the game. 4.20 left in the first. Uh, I was doing a couple of the games last year here as well at the finals day, and we would have been praying on, on one or two of the games to have 7-4 uh, as a score this early in the, in the quarter. Hopefully both teams will keep it going. Yeah, Stuffy here comes up with the ball. She goes back to the three-point threat there. Alexa McInerney, who's knocked down one already. Zundel, back to McInerney. McInerney puts up a long, long two this time. Unfortunately, Zundel can't just pull that off the rebound. This ball gets taken out, stolen back. Shannon Nikunagon comes away with it for her school. Pushes the ball right down the middle of the floor. And goes, as they like to say, Pat, she goes, went coast to coast. Yeah, she's got all six points starting off here for Donegal. So she's done a really good job. I really should have said at the start that, you know, I'm probably going to struggle a bit with the pronunciation on some of the names on uh, the girls from Donegal. So I want to apologise in advance for that. Uh, it's been a while. So I've been living in Belfast the last nine years now and I haven't had as much exposure to the, the Gaelic as I would have had when I was back in Galway. Nice Euro step, unfortunately, it just didn't drop. Yeah, it's been a quick tempo starting off here to the game. Both teams looking to, I suppose, push the ball as um, as soon as they get it, look to push the ball along the floor. Yeah, and you can see, you know, both teams feel that it's the it's the easiest way to, to get baskets is when the defense isn't set. As we see... Uh, Shawnee Neuwain goes inside there to knock that one down for two. Yeah, she did. And that's the first lead of the game for Kloshe Eilig. So. 8 7, 2.35 to go in this. Laurel Hill working the ball around the outside. Duffy puts up a long one again. She's not afraid to shoot that three. No, I think uh, Donny Gall's good here will be really happy with how the last couple of minutes went there. They're starting to get some of these defensive rebounds and definitely limiting Laurel Hill. Just at a one attempt, just those proves on the scoreline as they lead eight to seven at the moment. Yeah, foul call there now on uh, Emily Dickinson. And she takes a breather. Ashton Fahey checks into the game for the first time for her team. Also, we spoke there about the uh, up tempo and all that kind of stuff. I suppose when you want to play that type of tempo and running up and down. You really need to, supposed to have a strong bench just so the players can get a bit of rotation, get a bit of a rest and get up and down. Yeah, you have to remember this is under 16, you know, so some of these girls are 14, just turned 15 and playing this, as well as the ones that are a little bit older and it's more their age group. So it is important and you look down at both teams, you see they both got full bunches. So hopefully they're uh, able to rotate and give girls a breather because, you know, some nice up-tempo basketball would be great to see in this final. Good rebound again. Shannon Ekulgan is she goes very up. solid. Yeah. Again, as you mentioned earlier, that coast to coast. The fans love it. The flags are up. And Shannon puts her team in the lead. 10 play 7. Definitely yeah. coach uh, Tommy Walsh down there will definitely probably have to come up with a, a plan maybe as he moves into the second quarter. Just to limit that as uh, Shannon has 8 points on the board already for her team. Yeah, I think he's actually going to call a timeout now. Especially if they score here. Yeah, and uh, he wants to talk it over. So with that, we're going to have a timeout with one forty remaining in the first.
And we're back here. After that time out there, we're just one thirty remaining in the quarter. Yeah, Laurel Hill will be looking to try and uh, stop the run, and in particular, stop number 11, Shannon Echelgan, because if uh, she keeps going the way she is, like I said earlier, she scored 35 points in one of the games earlier to get here to the final. So they'll be uh, looking to try and slow her down, but at the same time, they need to start putting the ball in the basket themselves because it's a five-point lead now. They'll try and get it down to level or close to it to finish off the quarter. And it's interesting there, obviously, from that time out, you can see down there, coach Tommy Walsh you now has come out of this man-to-man -man principle offense, and they've gone into, as we spoke about, uh, the zonal offense. They're looking to play zone, maybe just close up the middle and take the higher percentage shots. Um, didn't seem like it would work that time as Shanty Coonagon got the ball, head up, seen the basket, a lovely dribble drive, took it around her opponent, and again got him to take that high percentage shot, which he looks to like to take here. Yeah, she's getting the defense to stand up tall, and then that's giving her the opportunity to go around them, you know. I think the, the girls need to stay in defensive stance, stand off her just a little bit, and not make it too easy for her to attack. As that time, Shanna found herself on the floor, picking up that ball, out of it quick to her team. And in the end, it was Sean and Ugin who ends up drawing the fouls, and she's going to go to the free throw line now. What a chance to stretch this lead even further. Yeah, and I think that's the second foul on Jennifer Duffy. No, sorry, apologies. That's on Alexa McInerney. And that's her first. So Shauna misses the first one. 50 seconds to go in this first quarter. Again comes up short. It's going to be a Laurel Hills ball as they trail 14 plays 7. Again, interesting to see here now that um, Klaus comes out here now with kind of a zonal pressure. Maybe just to see, like, can they put some pressure? And it works perfectly this time. Really good coaching decision there, taken by. Ball knocked away, back to Shannon e. Shannon drives inside, she draws a foul for herself. And now she's going to go to the line shooting too. Second foul picked up in quick succession by McInerney. Like you said, good decision there by coach Kiko Cuevan. Go to the 2 2 1 zone press as they knock the first of the free throws in. That one goes, makes it two for two. So total to 12 points there for the first quarter. Ball in the hands of McInerney. Tried to get the ball into Zundel there. She was wide open under the basket. But again, Klaus to Isla come out again, looking to go as quick as it can. Down the middle. And who better than Shannon Lee putting on. Picks it up in the middle. Pat, she likes to see, seem to pick the ball up there in that position, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She does a really good job of... You know, like I said, looking at the basket, getting the defense to stand tall, and then she's really quick at putting the ball on the floor, that one quick dribble to get around the defender, and she's very, very confident finishing on her right hand. So as the clock winds down, I don't think Laurel Hill are aware of what's on it. And at the end of one, it's a scoreline of 18 plays seven in favor of Klaus Eder. We're going to be back with the second quarter. Thank you.
Ladies and gents, welcome back for the second quarter. Here on us on the 16th C. So obviously there we just mentioned there off air. Look, 18 points scored already by Klaus Jeda. Um, Pat, you were saying there that it's a fairly impressive um, offensive game early on, isn't it? Yeah, and it, and it really is coming down to that one lady who unfortunately just has a turnover there now. Number 11, Shannon Echligan. She is just phenomenal uh, offensive threat for Klaus de Eilig. Every time she gets the ball, you know, it's, she's scored. I think she's missed twice. Uh, but she has, I think it's 14 of their 18 points. She's just been phenomenal for them. Yeah, that's a fairly good contribution, 14 points. Like, you know, And even, I suppose, the overall team number, the 18 points in the quarter in eight minutes. Remember, that's two minutes less, obviously, that you play, I suppose, in like Women's National League and things like that. So I suppose you'd be happy, obviously, back coaching Ulster Elks. If he went out and he scored 20 points a quarter, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's our target. You know, we, we aim for 80 points a game. Uh, Women's Division 1 has been very competitive this year with some really good high-scoring games. So, um, yeah, for sure, 20 points a game, 20 points a quarter, I'd be very happy with. I suppose, again, we need to mention anyone who is into, you know, watching women's basketball this Sunday. Obviously, we have, in the side this weekend, the Hula Hoops National Cup is on all weekend here in the National Basketball Arena. So regarding streaming the games and watching the games, all that will be available on the Basketball Ireland website. Where um, I suppose, Pat, you yourself at Ulster Elks, you feature as you take on Mary here this weekend. Yeah, you know, first time ever for the club and getting to the National Cup final. So it's been a fantastic run. Uh, we don't want it to stop. You know, we want to see if we can take that next step and become the, the champions. Mary are a quality, outlet, uh, qu quality outfit. They've uh, beaten us in the league this season. They're unbeaten so far. Um, and it'll be a really tough game. But you know what? I think it'll be a really entertaining game. Good. And again, that's the Hula Hoops National Cup point, which is on here in the National Basketball Arena all weekend. So if any tuned in today to watch this uh, under 16 schools basketball, just to watch it. I suppose if you want to watch the top basketball played in Ireland, it is available here. And again, will be available. It's probably streamed as well. As Slosh Eilid moved the ball inside. Unfortunately, doesn't go that time. So back to here, Alexa McInerney on the point for her team. Six and a half minutes remaining. She gets the ball back to Duffy, back to McInerney. Back to Zundel. She puts she has two points so far for her team. We mentioned uh, Zundel in the I suppose the pre-game. As McInerney knocks out her second three-pointer. That's exactly what coach Tommy Walsh would have been looking for, I think. You know, ending that quarter to start this quarter. Maybe get the first stop and the first score, as he seemed to have done well. Yeah, they've done a great job, you know, to, to cut into the lead. Defensively, they've done a better job of forcing turnovers. Um, you know, even here now, they've they've fouled her. So Shannon's going to have to take two free throws rather than just get an easy basket. So I suppose, Pat, just from a coach perspective, obviously Shannon, you know, we mentioned 14 of the 18 points as she goes to the line here. I can see there, uh, Coach Tommy Walsh has resorted to go back to a kind of a I suppose a man-to-man -man principle but one girl guarding her at any stage in this game as a coach would you be looking to put an extra body on her and maybe have two people on her at once or yeah you know she's very effective close to the basket so it is the type of thing where you can look to to double team um and it, you know on the catch but I think what what has been happening is she turns very quickly so you need to anticipate that the ball is coming into her and start moving your second defender in quickly. Uh, she puts up 16 points already in this first half. Zundel on the other end. Ball goes up and Forchie falls up short. That's going to be a clash to Isla Ball. And the Donegal outfit here in yellow today leading up 20 points to 12. Just about five and a half minutes remaining in the half. Again, they look to spread the ball, get the ball inside to Shannon. She drives inside. Good defense by McInerney that time. She's on two fouls, Pat, so she did well not to foul that time. She did, and, you know, did a great job of getting the ball out quickly, and they moved the ball up to Yana, and uh, Yana draws the foul, and she's going to go to the free throw line. I think we're just with that there, the coach is going to call a timeout to talk that one over.
So we're back here now, midway through the second quarter, with 5.22 remaining. And Yana Zundel goes to the line, shooting two. Gets the first one to go. Yeah, she's a good free throw shooter. I, uh, I think she was nearly 100% in the under-19 game. I thought you were going to put a curse on poor Yana Zundel there, but unfortunately she got the shooter's touch, got the roll, and that ball goes nicely into the basket. So... Even though I suppose all the scoring that um, Shannon Lee Cooningon is doing, Lauren Hill will still be kind of happy that they're still in this game. 20 points to 14, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, to come back from, from where they were at 18-7 and, and get it back to a six-point game, Coach Tommy Walsh should be quite happy about that. She's not just uh, in and around the basket type of player there, as she proves. Shooting the ball probably about 23 feet there to knock down a long, long two. Yeah, she's just a quality offensive threat for this team. She really is a nice player. She moves the ball forward there, playing Sean Ugin. Shannon moves inside, scoops it up. She done really well there on that finish. If you notice there, she kind of brought the ball down low and shot from down low. Again, she could see just where the defender's hands are, and she, well, she didn't want to be blocked or any impeded on that shot, so she did well to shoot the ball from a different angle. Really good offensive play. Yeah, La Laurel Hill still haven't got a handle on her, you know, and unless they do, this game is, is going to be tough for them to get into because she just seems to be able to score at will. Yeah, as coach there, uh, Tommy Walsh checks in Lily O'Halloran. Duffy puts up a long two. That one for she rims out. Look there, Shannon there. This time she's kind of trailing the player. She's taking a bit of a rest, I think, there at the moment. As she comes up, straight into the offense. And here they're going to run her off the screen. Look to get her the ball. And off the dribble there she goes. Lovely step through. And I think maybe that missed shot there just could be a sign of fatigue. Obviously, she's after being involved heavily in this opening half. Yeah, and, and hasn't had a break either, you know, so... I agree, you can see she's walking back to court, whereas earlier she was running hard. Uh, and, you know, you do start to feel it when you're running up and down. And this has been a high-tempo game, you know. It's, they've really been going at each other. Oh, Halloran just had the ball pulled off her there. Blocked away. Zundel, back to back in Ernie to O'Halloran. Again, excellent steal. Stolen back. It's kind of, I suppose, you can see both teams a bit tired here now at the moment and they're throwing the ball away at times. Yeah, that's two great steals there by Kaylee. She's actually in the BI and Ulster Academy. So she's in the under 15 and she's playing the point for Kloster Eilig. So uh, well played there by her. So Kuningan will go to the line again, shooting two. After picking up that foul on that triple drive she attempted. Really good uh, free throw shooter. I think Pat, like, I suppose her herself, she knows she's going to be heavily involved in the offense. Knows she's going to get to the basket a lot. So, so she must put a lot of time in practice in her free throws just to ensure that when she does get fouled, she puts the ball into the basket. Yeah, she's a, uh, she's, uh, you know, a very accomplished offensive player. You can see she's obviously put a lot of work into that side of her game. Scoring now, Tasha Oyla lead and a scoring 26. There's Laurel Hills 14. Just three minutes here remaining. Duffy to Zundel. Back to O'Halloran. Back to Duffy, O'Halloran. Kind of been, they've been given the outside shot here, but uh, I think Laurel Hill are looking to really work the ball inside and take a higher percentage shot. Unfortunately, that time, ball again got stolen away. Cooning on that time, she becomes the distributor. She doesn't take it on herself. She looks to go to a teammate. Use a good fake, a really good step through. Fortunately, ball doesn't go. Excellent defense by Zundel there. Zundel has a, you know, a bit of height for, I suppose, an under-16 girl here. And she did really well there to close up the key. Yeah, she did. You know, she's, she's got long arms and she uses them really well. But unfortunately, this time, again, it was a one-on-one -on -one situation where Shannon found herself going against the smaller defender there in Sinead O'Brien. So Shannon Nikunigan again 
gets the line, makes two to go. So now she has a bonus, shooting one shot with 2.23 remaining. And again, knocks down that shot. It's been a big, I suppose, two minutes there since that time out there now for Clash Isla, Pat. They've pushed it out there. We spoke there, it was 20, 2014 at the thing, at the time out. Now we're at 29 14. So they scored the last nine points unaccounted. And that's the fourth steal in a row for Kayleigh Niegenta. Now, as she gets another one, fifth. So, great defence here as well. So, it's not just an offensive clinic that we're seeing from Shannon. You know, we're seeing the rest of the team contributing and providing those opportunities. Oh, Shannon there throws a bit of wall pass and that goes out of bounds. I think the coach looks up there and she can see how tired some of her players are. So, she's going to take a timeout, give them a bit of a rest before we uh, go into the half time. So welcome back. We're still in the second half here. Or oh, sorry, still in the second quarter, big pardon. So you got one minute fifty-five seconds remaining. As referee there just uh, cleans the, the a count out symbol there. Just felt that Laurel Hill were taking a bit too long to inbound the ball. As coach uh, Tommy Walsh team were a bit slow to come off the bench following that timeout. Yeah, quick shot, not really what Laurel Hill needs. You know, they need to look to, uh, rather than an open shot, they need to get a good shot. Um, so they need to kind of, I, I, I would feel they need to work the ball around a little bit more and see if they can get something maybe a bit closer to the basket. Um, and then we see Klosh Eilig picking up, drawing another foul and getting to the free throw line. And yeah, it's just obviously as they are on the line there and it's uh, Johnny Ugin who goes to the line herself as one or two points, uh, sorry, has put four points on the board here as well already today. And um, we look down there and we see that coach decided that Shandy Kudigan is just going to sit out the rest of this half, give her a bit of a rest, and look to use maybe some of the fresher players, players a lot more, bit more energy still left in the tank, just to keep the pressure on Laurel Hill. Because as you mentioned, they still have, to have the last nine points in a row. Yeah, no, good decision. I think you know you could see she was getting a little bit tired. She'd done an awful lot. She's carried the load offensively for them. So opportunity for the rest of the girls to step up a little bit. And here she, you know, and and uh, good opportunity at this stage of the game to give her a bit of a breather. 120 to go in this second quarter. O'Halloran looking to get the ball into Zundel. She's been heavily guarded. O'Halloran puts up a long, long three. Not too sure if she wanted to shoot that one herself. Kind of was looking for the pass first. Unfortunately, the pass wasn't available. She had no option really to put up a long shot instead. Yeah, good, good work there by Roshin Ryan on the offensive board. Just to, couldn't quite drag it in but uh, at least she was actively looking for that rebound the defense here now again Jennifer Duffy defends it brings the ball up herself gets the ball into Zundel Zundel goes in unfortunately this one can't go really good defense there excellent fast break there no you know was it number 8 there I think you know ended up throwing the ball Sinead me uh, sore through the ball from the half court right into the key you know that's the type of basketball you like to see scoring the basketball before the other team can come back and even give you a chance to defend it 
Yeah, they've done really well, capitalising on turnovers and, and looking to get their transition game going. You can see it's where they, they get a lot of points and then they also then have the, the fallback when they're into their half-court set of um, Nick Hoigon. That ball just rolls out of bounds there. A little bit of confusion there, I think. So, Megan Nicheron. Nicheron? We got three seconds here now remaining in the half. Let's see, do Laurel Hill get a shot off? Zundel dribbles this one out. And again, two quarters in the she not to able to get a shot off at the end. So, half time, it's 31 pays 14. We'll be back shortly with the second half.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. We're back here for the second half, where it's a clutch idle lead on a scoreline 31 plays Laurel Hills 14. So, again, as mentioned earlier, I'm joined here by uh, Ulster Rouse coach Pat O'Neill. So, Pat, um, what exactly do you think Laurel Hill need to do just to get back into this game, or is there any way back into this for them? Well, the first thing is they need stops. So, they need to stop uh, Sharon, so they do. And if they can stop Shannon scoring the ball, then they're going to put themselves in an opportunity at least of, of, of you know, the game not running away from them. So, so far, actually, to start this quarter, they've done a pretty good job of forcing uh, contested shots. They just need to secure the rebound. And then on the other side, a little bit more patience. Look for, look for the right shot rather than just settle for the open shot. And then, and then obviously, look, high scoring game. We mentioned it being eight, eight um, sorry, minutes a quarter. So obviously, 31 points there in the first half. Is, you know, it's a decent scoring for under 16C with the, the shortened game. So the other, I suppose, Clause 8, they'd probably be looking to go and just continue and maybe take about up 60 plus points on the board, hoping that, you know, they can score more than they, they give up essentially just to win this game. Yeah, as we see the long three point effort there from Lauren Hill and good offensive rebound by Yana. As we mentioned earlier, such a fantastic free throw shooter as we've seen in the under 19 game. So I thought Coach Tommy Walsh should be looking to get two points on the board here straight away. We see substitution with Sean and Neyuga and checking back in. So Yanis Undell goes to the line shooting too. Unfortunately, this one hits the back of the rim, so this one's not going to go down for her. Commentator's curse, Danny. Sundell knocks that one down, so she goes one for two. It's been a while actually since Laurel Hill have got a, got a point in the board. I think with four minutes to go in the, the last quarter they have their last basket. So Coach Walsh there will be happy that he can get a score on the board. Even though it's just a one, but get it early on here in this half. Yeah, as we see Kaylee take that long two and knock it down. I think and that's exactly what they would need in the Dunning All outfit. As you can see there, uh, Laurel Hill are kind of back to a really, um, I suppose, a low pressure defense where they're really trying to block up that green paint area and force in Klosh to shoot the ball from the outside. So Kaylee took a really nice jump shot there, knocking it down. But at the end of the end, Laurel Hill go all the way to the basket to find themselves getting a nice easy layup. So some quick scores here in the quarter. Yeah, just like the start of the game, you know, at, at both teams finding a little bit of rhythm offensively and uh, making some scores. So on that there, Shannon E. Cooling on just gets called for an offensive foul. She had to set out like a pick, like a, a ball screen for her, one of our players. Unfortunately, the referee deemed there that she was a bit aggressive and wasn't there in enough time. So again, it's another stop for Co Wa Coach Walsh's uh, Laurel Hill. As McInerney throws the ball away, unfortunately, this time. Kicked up by Sean E. Ugon. Sean, Shauna inside. Really used to the glass. The ball kind of sat on the rim there for a moment. But it went down, so it's 35 points for 17. And again, Klaus Oida going back to that man-to-man -man, uh, pressure defense. Not going to give Laurel Hill any easy opportunity to score the basketball. They really have to work for all their scores here. As Duffy dribbles the ball down, goes back to Zundel. She puts up that three-point. Unfortunately, that three-point is just a bit short to the basket. Yeah, it was low shot clock. I don't think she had much of a choice, really, but to get the ball up quickly. Kaylee just slowing the thing down there for her team. It won't be too much of a rush there as they were in the first half. As the ball goes inside, Kooning on, blocked away by Zundel. Again, really good defence there by Zundel. You know, she stood tall, used her length there, I suppose, over uh, Shani Kooning on, got the block on that shot, and then came up winning the ball for her team. So again, they're getting the stops, Laurel Hill, here in this quarter. Just unfortunately, we're, we're not seeing just three points in the last three minutes. Probably going to need to shoot at a bit of higher percentage. Lovely Duffy backdoor. Cut. Lovely backdoor, exactly, yeah. Pat. Really nice there. Uh, we're supposed to guard to see the backdoor. Just dribbling there with her head up. Seeing our player go backdoor. But really nice finish there. It was finished by number 14, Jennifer Duffy. Yeah, Jennifer's been a good offensive threat for Lauren Hill now. She's got a couple of baskets in the first half, and she's uh, starting off strong as well here in the second. Yeah, as Shani Kooning on there, steps aside, and she's that three-pointer. 
I think she can see herself, Shannon. That there's a lot of pressure on her on the inside, so she steps outside to get an open shot. As on the other end, does a bit job on defence. Steals at the half line and dribbles in for a high percentage layup. And again, she gets her first score this quarter. Yeah, she's a quality act as we see uh, Lauren Hill doing some dribble handoff around the outside and then finding Yana inside. She just wasn't able to catch it cleanly, so had to step out to get it. They're doing a better job of working the ball inside. And lovely little, uh, was, we won't even call it a layup, but it was like a two-foot jump shot there by, Z by Yana Zandel. So both teams scoring the ball fairly well here in the third quarter. Yeah, but it's not going to be enough for Lauren Hill. They need to force stops if they want to get back into it. They just can't keep going score for score. Yeah, this eight minutes a quarter does go fairly quick, especially when uh, you know we haven't had any timeouts yet. So we are down to three and a half minutes al already. And Shani Kunigan dribbles inside there. Really good use of the left hand. Yeah, smart offensive face. You could see that maybe that Zundel would have, you know, could have challenged or maybe blocked the shot if she used her right hand. So she brought the ball over to her left hand side, the opposite side of her body, and used the, you know, the left hand to lay the ball off the glass. Really, really nice basketball. Yeah, she's really showing a little bit of everything today now. So she is. She's hit a couple of nice outside shots. Very strong finishing with her right, and there a lovely touch with the left hand. Duffy back to McInerney. She's got one already. Far she just doesn't doesn't go. Shani Coonagan ball over the top. Stolen by McInerney. Stolen back by Shannon. The Coonagan just dribbles inside, takes the contact. Contact goes at number 19, Emily Dickinson. Yeah, really good job. And you know, she kept the left hand dribble there because the defender was on her right hand hip the whole way. Uh, you know, smart play. Yeah, so referee just actually changed her mind on that one. First we deemed that it was going to be an out of bounds as there was no shot, but uh, I think the other referee just instructed that she had picked up the ball, so she was on her 1-2, just about to release the ball. So they're going to give two shots. As that forward there went on, I said, Emily Dickinson. That's actually going to be her fourth personal foul. So Emily was out there trying to guard um, Shannon Kooning on there for most of that quarter. But again, just proving there a bit, you know, did have to pick up a couple of fouls. Yeah, she's a handful, you know, especially when you have have a player with so many weapons in her skill set. She's uh, she's very tough to defend against. As a 2.43 remaining. Miss Lush Island lead on a scoring 40, plays Laurel Hill 21. I think Laurel Hill are going to need to speed things up a little bit. So not necessarily take quicker shots, but just need to get down into it. So not settle for the first one, but get into their offense a little bit quicker because if they're going to slow things down and wait for a late shot clock to look for it, it's only going to play into Kloster Eilig's uh, hands. McInerney inbounds it. Zundel. Back to McInerney, as you mentioned. Likes that three-point shot pass. She got one to go earlier. Just unfortunately, the last two there haven't gone her way. Yeah, they're good looks. You know, she's she's wide open on them. She just uh, needs to keep shooting. Have that shooter's mentality of keep shooting until the ball drops for her. Not a good check there by Yana. She really is very long as she gets a piece of that one too and forces it off low off the front of the rim. Lord Hill pick up the rebound. McInerney comes away with it. I mentioned that shooter there. Ashton Fahey drives inside. Back to McInerney. Unfortunately, this one doesn't go. Ball kind of ping-ponged everywhere there. And in the end, it's Sean Ugin comes away with the ball. Lovely dribble play there. Pat through the legs just to get away from the defender. Yeah, she did. Nice and nice crossover on it as well to give her space. So she did. Two nice jump shots. Unfortunately, didn't drop for them. Laurel Hill pick up the defensive rebound and now bringing it up is McInerney stolen away Shawnee Ugin she sees Shannon ahead Shannon again using that uh, outreach right hand there just to scoop the ball up as you can see that her defender as you mentioned was on that left hand hip so it's really good to see there the use of both hands here on the offense from Shannon really good offensive player yeah she's done really well you know even even the fact that she didn't use a dribble on that she didn't she knew she didn't have to she was just solid took her two steps and finished 
Ball goes over the top to Shauna. Lovely Euro step. Again, really nice play there to finish the ball off the glass. Because this game goes on there, you think they've only got out for the Clash Isla are actually only getting stronger as they push it up to a 44 plays 21 lead. Um, as we go down to 30 seconds remaining in the half. Or sorry, remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, substitution on both sides now just to finish this third quarter. Checking in is Aaron Ni for Klosht Ayla and Kaylee gets the ball outside. Ball's going to be stolen away by Lily O'Halloran. Lily's picked up a couple of nice steals here in the quarter, or sorry, in the half of her team. And that's Sarah Cantlin who just checked in with the jump shot, which unfortunately rims out. And as the clock dies down with four, three, three seconds remaining in the third quarter. Referee symbolizes to each other, there's going to be one shot here left. Co the coaching as well here for Koshi, just letting them know exactly what's left. Is they're going to kind of, uh, I suppose, force like a, a stack formation offense here to see if they get the ball in and get the ball up. Ball's going to Shannon, she takes a dribble, pulls up for two. Right before the buzzer, Shannon Koonigan scores the basketball, making a 46 21. At the end of three, we'll be back for the fourth quarter very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for this last quarter. So the last eight minutes of basketball for the under 16 C Subway All Ireland Schools Cup. We're at the moment now it's a bit one sided, especially after that strong third quarter. So it's 46 points to Clausha Isla from Donegal. There's 21 points from Laurel Hill. So Pat, I suppose just want to kind of summarise there, I suppose, what, what worked well for Clausha Isla to put themselves 25 points in the lead. Yeah, well, a massive factor is number 11, Shannon Echoyvon. She is just uh, impossible to stop offensively. She's got right hand finishes. She can come off the dribble. She can shoot the ball from the outside. She's finished in the left hand. You know, she's a real talent. Um, and not just offensively, like she's done really, really well as she goes into a Euro step there, gets blocked, grabs her own rebound, misses with the putback, and grabs another rebound. Yeah, I think she was quite aggressive there to get after the ball. She wasn't happy that the shot didn't go herself. So she made sure that she went and got the rebound. So, really nice offensive play. Yeah, as we see Roshan Ryan with the defensive rebound, looking for an outlet. She finds Sarah Cantlin. Looking inside for Yana. Forces it a little bit. Did okay to get it. Unfortunately, it's a travel. Once you get your knee on the ground and catch the ball, if it's a loose ball, you cannot take your knee off without releasing the ball and passing it to somebody.
ball gets inbounded again. So as you mentioned there, uh, Kaylee there had a, some a repressive game as well and defensively getting a lot of defensive steals leading to some fast breaks for her team. Yeah, she's done really well. You know, herself and uh, Shauna have been the other two standouts in my view for Kloshed Eilig. Um, but you really have to say that there's, there's been nobody out here who can touch uh, Shannon Ekulvan. Duffy to O'Halloran, puts up a very deep three. Again, just to show us that the defensive pressure that's there by Klaus Ayla, you know, forcing him to shoot that ball, you know, maybe three or four feet behind the three-point line. Yeah, I think Coach Tommy Walsh is just going to call a timeout here. I think uh, he just needs to settle the girls a little bit now that they're looking at that zone and, and trying to, to get them to work towards it. We'll be right back after this. So we're back here with 6.30 remaining in the game. Just checking the score sheet there, Danny, and uh, Shannon has 34 points coming into this fourth quarter. As we see Lauren Hill with a long two. But it's really impressive, obviously 34 points out of the 46. So really, really good, impressive uh, offensive play. Just the referee deems there, Shannon like double dribble the basketball. I think she was going to make the pass, unfortunately that pass was taken away. So she had no option but to touch the ball with her offhand again. So McInerney seeking to get some la late baskets here for her team. Uh, just under six minutes to go in this fourth. And it's double scores, good defense. A bit of a loose pass and Lauren Hill pick it off. We're looking inside for Yana but didn't find her. And here's Shauna on the ball with, on the point. She steps in. Finds Annie. Annie swings it across. Shauna has it again on the baseline. Nice crossover. The jump shot doesn't quite drop for her. McInerney takes the rebound. And Shannon literally was just about to pick this one up. Fortunately, ball goes out off the foot of her teammate. So the ball is going to be back in the hands of McInerney. He's at 46, there's 23, with just over five minutes remaining here now. Mm. Yeah, good work there by Anna. She held her position well, forced the defender to grab her arm. As we see Ashling Fahey inbound the ball to McInerney. McInerney swinging it around to Cantlin. Nice two-point attempt by Fahey. Unlucky, Yana with the rebound. Shannon this time pulls up a defensive rebound. Outlets the ball to Annie. Shani Kunigal works it inside. Lovely one-two around Zundel. Unfortunately, this one can't go. Again, I suppose at this stage of the game, it's a sign of uh, some tired legs out there from Shannon. 34 points is a good offensive outlet, you know. It's yeah. going to take her toll eventually on her. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, she's only had, I think, maybe about a minute and 50 break. So she has. So she's been out there the whole time for them. As she finishes a lovely right-hand layup in transition. Pushes the score up to 
There's a nice take inside there by Yana Zundel. McInerney just knocks that one out of the way there to stop the break. Looking down here, we have some substitutions coming in. I think Shannon Ekogon was hoping it might have been her taking a bit of a breather, but... Yeah, I think she looked into the co looked at the coach there as if to say, yeah. is my job done yet, coach? Yeah. Um, and checking in is number eight, Sinead Yatresor. And I think the coach is saying, no, Shannon, that's only 38. Yeah. Maybe she wants to get to 40, Pat. Maybe she did. <laughs> yeah, it's a phenomenal scoring achievement here in an under 16C. Subway Schools Cup. And they're still pushing the ball up. That's Kaylee doing a good job. Doesn't get the layup to drop. Good offensive rebound again. Sonny New again, really nice job there, pulling that ball from her opponent, getting the ball inside, and just unfortunately that shot didn't go. As you look down there, coach is having a look there, maybe giving some instructions there to some of the one or two of the girls on the bench, but maybe substituting into this game. I think she's looking at the clock too and seeing, all right, okay, maybe we'll just get it under under the three minutes and then I can run the bench a little bit. So to, with the school's cup, there's been it's been a long uh, road to this cup final, playing a lot of preliminary games and you know quarterfinals and semi-finals. And as you know, Pat, every player throughout that team there has been a vital part, whether it be in the training sessions or the games. So it's really good to see that everyone participates here in this final today. Yeah, for sure, and you know, Lauren Hill have been subbing in regularly, and I think he's got everybody in. And I think uh, Klaus Jelig will be doing the same as we come down the stretch here. That's a really nice jump shot there by Sinead there, knocking it down from the outside. Yeah, it really has been an offensive clinic for uh, Klaus Jelig, so it has. Lauren Hill with the big three attempt. Comes out. Shannon with the rebound. She's pushing the ball down. Swings the ball across court. Finds Shona. Shona Ugin steps outside. Didn't see Shannon on the cut there. So she swung the ball around again. Okay, they just can't get that jump shot to drop. And here we are. Substitutions happen for Lauren Hill. Four girls checking in. And Michaela, Michaela Nee Gallagher makes her way to the subs bench there. So maybe Shannon on 38 points is going to get her. I suppose the standing ovation she deserves some of her teammates and uh, the supporters here today. Yeah, she's been phenomenal in fairness. You think she knows she's on 38, Pat, and she might want to get one more just to run it off the 40? I, looking at her, I don't think so. I think she's looking at it and kind of thinking, all right, I've worked really hard, and now she's uh, ready to... No, I think it. she's ready to play offense again, Pat. It looks like... The coach is actually going to leave Shannon in there. Tommy Walsh wouldn't be too happy with that, I don't think. I think he'd be glad to see the back of Shannon here after, you know, this 38 points onslaught she put on here. Yeah, absolutely. Great bounce pass there by Kaylee inside. Number 10, Maeveni. Shit all has just checked in. 1.35 to go in this game. Lauren Hill are unfortunately struggling a little bit against this zone defense as Sean and Ewey go on. Really attacks. nice attack to the basket there, you know. Kept yeah. the head up, was always looking to score. 
and the only way to stop her when you're coming from behind this was was the attempt to block and drew the foul on that one yeah and that was McInerney's fifth so she will take a seat Missed the first and knocks down the second. 54 points to 23, and we've one minute and 22 seconds to go in this under 16C Subway All Ireland Schools Cup. Lauren Hill looking for uh, the deep three, didn't come off for them. Josh Ailey bring the ball up and it's Kaylee on the point. She swings it across to Shauna. Shauna sees the gap. Attacks the basket. Gets past her defender and scores. And so one minute remaining here now. It's 56 points plus 23. I suppose patches are rolling up on this game. The thing with under 16 C is some of these girls, you know, a lot of them playing around the same age group, even though they're from, a, I suppose, there's a big distance between Limerick and Donegal on a map. You know, they could see each other again here in the future, whether it be, you know, maybe next year or under 19 and, you know, clubs and all that kind of stuff. So, really good to see, I suppose, what they're going to be up against. Yeah, it's a fantastic experience. Like, Lauren Hill, to get two teams into the finals, you know, it's, it's been a big push for them. Uh, you know, they made an investment in getting in a coach like Tommy Walsh to, to help with the school teams, and he's done a, a fantastic job. And while they won't have won either game today, just the fact that they've managed to get this far, you know, it's been a while since Lauren Hill have been on this, st this stage. And here we are now at 30 seconds to go. And Shannon gets two points off lovely inbounds play. We've uh, 24 seconds to go. Ball gets tied up, and it's going to be yellow ball. So Klaus Eilig are going to have it. Shannon Ifovan inbounding to Kaylee. Kelly across to Shauna. Shauna doing exactly what she did just last time. Doesn't get to say quite the same outcome. Good defensive rebound. Michaela, sorry, offensive rebound. And as we are, one second. And the game is all over. Congratulations to Kalosh Dalig from Letterkenny. Great win on a scoreline of 59 points to 26 over Lauren Hill from Limerick. I think we've, uh, you know, seen a future star in the making in, in Shannon. She was exceptional today, showing so many different offensive skills. And uh, I'm going to leave you here now, and you can watch the presentation as we're looking on, and you'll see what it means to these girls to take this under-16C Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup final. Thanks very much, and if you stay with us, Next game will be kicking off in about 15 minutes time.